afternoon, ladies and germs. Um, as you are able to observe, I am in my orf I mean office. And yes, you can see the sign right there, be kind. Um, Linda forgot to take her medication last night and finally took it and got to bed about midnight or thereabouts, I think, maybe a little before. I got to bed about 3 in the morning. I always get to bed about 3 in the morning. Well, why do you stay up so late? I have pain issues like everybody that watches this vlog already knows. Um, many times I will take my evening medication and wait for it to kick in and then it doesn't kick in well and I have to take more and sometimes I have to over medicate which is what I had to do last night a lot of times I'll go to bed try to lay down and have to get back up and sit when I see my doctor on April 14th Friday April 14th I think that's when it is um, I will tell her, my feet are doing great. Um, they have feeling all the way through them. Everything's great there. My legs do not work well, and my hands do not work well from about, oh, here down in the mornings. This morning was no exception. I had to go to the bank Speaking of which, let me get that out so I can balance the checkbook. Is that it? Yep. I had to go to the bank. Then I went to 77 Grill in Davis and had breakfast. And I brought Linda breakfast home. So when she gets out of bed, I'll let her know there is food for her in the refrigerator. I always try to treat my wife well. Um, happy wife, happy life, that's a common saying. My attitude is, what can I do to help my wife be happy and be have... Uh, a more pleasant life and I'm doing that um, I uh, have been paying attention to a lot of things and I while I was sitting eating breakfast I overheard I, I sit with my back away from the door and from others at a table I sit at on the side, one of the side chairs. Shelly Hicks, the gal that owns the restaurant, is a good friend of mine. And I was listening to her and a guy that's a regular and a few more people and some employees. And I was with my good ear toward them so I could hear. And, uh, Mostly they were talking about all these illegals that have been coming over, coming crossing the southern border. Um, we have a fentanyl problem, I guess that's how you pronounce it, it narcotic coming out of uh, Mexico across our border into the United States a lot of people we have about a hundred thousand deaths a year from that and that's just from the drug that's not counting the gun violence the 
all the other things that go with it. Let me get a sip of water. I have friends and relatives in Texas. I have friends in Florida. I have friends in New Mexico and Arizona. Friends and relatives in California. I have friends all the way across states that border that border Mexico. And the uh, something's going to need to be done. I'm not talking about those that come to our country wanting a better life and they come in and they have a visa and the visa expires. They like it so much here they stay, they work, they pay taxes. I'm not talking about those guys and I still think there needs to be something done with them. Uh, I don't necessarily believe they need to be deported. Um, let me tell you about Mexicans that I've known, that I've seen over the years. They will outwork anyone else. They work harder. They don't complain. They're just so thankful to have work and have money to send to their family. And they'll, they'll outwork just about anybody of a comparable Age. I know a person personally, and I'm not going to say his name, that he's in his 50s and he'll work circles out of guys, you know, half his age. I've been watching this take place, and I'm just being honest about it. I'm not talking about folks like that. I'm talking about the uh, gangsters that come up here and kill people, imprison people, um, do, do basically human trafficking, uh, drug distribution, um, the whole nine yards. Um, and I've had some friends that have had that happen to them, not the human trafficking, but the uh, violent confrontations. So something needs to be done. Now, what has that got to do with anything that I'm going to address today? Well, it has to do with this. Tomorrow we vote here in Oklahoma about um, legalizing recreational marijuana over anyone 21 years of age and older can just have pot. You know, we heard that when they put Remington Park Racetrack and legalized horse racing in Oklahoma to be gambled on, it would improve the school budgets. They always use that axiom, we're going to improve education, and it never happens. Politicians are large on promise and small on delivery by by large that is the rule not the exception um, legalized gambling Indian casinos regular casinos it started out the casinos were bingo halls where you could bet on bingo games and it just snowballed into full-blown gambling and now there are casinos here in Oklahoma legally with slot machines. In all a casino, you're never going to get ahead of a, a casino. And the thing is, most of the tribes that have them, where they have poker and uh, blackjack and dice and all that, they closely monitor all that. And they can spot a card, uh, card counter and spot a professional poker player coming in and wiping everyone else out. And I have a friend that asked, well, wouldn't you like to go uh, play and make you some money? First of all, 
I'll gamble with my life, and I have many times in the past. I will not gamble with my money. First of all, I really believe that gambling is a sin. And I have people, oh, that's crap. No, I, I just believe it's a sin, and it's not for me. I, uh, I have friends that are younger than Linda and I, friends on Facebook, that are proposing um, voting yes on state question 820. I would, anybody watching this, I would propose that you vote no on state question 820. Having been in law enforcement almost my entire adult life, I know the, the consequences of what legalizing anything does. With, um, you can, you, the average person cannot The average person cannot access the full National Crime Information Center information. You, you can't do it. You've got to be law enforcement or former law enforcement or be still considered an officer of the court. You cannot get into the bulk of it. You can get the top sheet, but you can't get the in-depth stuff. The reason I'm saying that when medical marijuana came in to Oklahoma, crime went down for about three to seven months. And then suddenly after, after it stabilized, it went up because people needed money to uh, support their fat habit. They'd go see a physician's a fit assistant or a doctor and Oh, I got this problem and I need marijuana to help sleep or I need marijuana to help deal with the pain. I need this. Well, let me explain something. Yes, I do use opioids by prescription. I have two of them. I take in the morning and two of them in the evening and I have to. Um, it's pain management. Just going to a... Uh, uh, Center for Pain Management and doing all the breathing exercises and the uh, physical exercises and the therapy they say to do, and I've done all that, doesn't help. It's not just nerve damage on me. I have things missing in me that the, uh, the body did not repair itself. My body didn't. So, I get things to help with that. It's not just neuropathy, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. So yes, but rather than intoxicating me when I take these two pills in the morning, two in the evening, two of many other pills I take, all it does is help me function like a normal human being to an extent. Um, it Rather than drinking myself into a stupor with alcohol or smoking marijuana and smoking myself into a stupor, what I did is I did it the right way. I went and saw the doctors and I got treated and that is how I manage my pain. Today my pain's about a level four. It's never underneath a level two. It's always there. My wife is having similar problems with her, her pain management. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is there are ways of dealing with it. You don't have to have marijuana. And I, I can hear people groaning now. It's a, God put it here. Well, God put it here. He put everything here. But he didn't put it here for you to, to just abuse any more than he gave you um, an explosion of dopamine and other things when you have sex and you reach that, that peak. He didn't give that to you 
as something for recreation. He gave that to you to procreate, to, to bring babies into the world, and a husband to show love and give pleasure to a wife and vice versa. It's not for recreation. It's not for uh, a man marrying a man, a woman marrying a woman is an abomination in the eyes of God. And I've got some friends that will probably unfriend me for this. But that is the truth. You have an obligation to lovingly let those that approve of that and practice that to know that they are doing wrong. And the folks I've spoken to about it that are friends of mine, they know they're doing wrong. But I just can't help it. I love him so much. Well, that's not how it works, folks. And uh, I have friends that proclaim to be Christian and uh, knowledgeable about Scripture and all that, and yet they say that it's okay to have another, to for a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. It's not okay. I got sidetracked on this, but the thing is, vote no tomorrow for state question 820. It. Jerry and I discussed it, and he thinks, and I think I'm probably being, conducting an exercise in futility by saying, yeah, vote no on here, because it's probably going to be approved. I hope it isn't. I've seen the damage, 28 years altogether, enforcing the law and investigating crimes, and I've seen the damage that all this stuff does. And uh, I have examples of it in my own family I won't go into, but I've seen it firsthand. So, let me get off of that and get on to something else. If you're a Christian, and I hope you are and you're watching this, you need to proclaim Christ to others. You need to go ahead and let people know there is a Savior and just express that to people. Right now, we are literally in the last of the last days, folks. I, I know it. I see it. I keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on, and I see what is taking place. And we're almost there. And if you have someone you haven't expressed that to and haven't proposed that they need to learn about Jesus Christ, Yeshua ben Miriam, if you have not presented that to someone, and you knew you should have, um, it will come back to haunt you in the afterlife. It will cause you shame when you knew you should have and you didn't. Well, this is my vlog for today. I'm sorry for cutting it as short as I am. I've got to pick children up from school here in a little bit. I'm going to try to get this loaded before I go do that. I'm going to try to go sit with my sweetheart before I have to go do that and see what I can do to help her. I love all of you with my whole heart. I found a passage I saw in Psalms 9, chapter 9 last night when Linda and I were reading scripture. I knew I got that phrase from somewhere, but it was from Psalms chapter 9. But I love you with my whole heart. I do. I want God to bless you. I want you to, to be kind to everyone you come in contact Please take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, I love you, God bless you, and bye.